Hey there everyone, I'm Dust Bunny Avenger, and if you're new to the channel, welcome to Slackers Undercover. If you like what you see, don't forget to slap that like button, bash that big old subscribe button, and tickle that little bell icon to make sure you never miss out on any of the awesome. What's up everyone, Dust Bunny Avenger here from Slackers Undercover, and welcome back to Rainswept. As always... Fair warning, the game contains depictions, images, and story pertaining to murder, suicide, and trauma, which may be disturbing for some viewers. You have been warned. But let us get into it. Beautiful world. The curious environment. And poor Detective Stone slowly losing his marbles. Whatever deep, dark secrets he's had in his past are starting to rise to the surface. You know what? Considering it's a beautiful day, let's have a non-smoking day, Mr. Stone. I don't care if you're stressed out. Look, smoking's not the answer. Leave? Yeah, go ahead and leave. So, Brian's back in Prime View. Prime View. We should talk to him. He'll be heading back today. Uh, he'll be heading back later today for his wedding preparations. We also need to talk to Jack about the picture we got from Johnny. He should be at his shop. What do you, uh, where do you want to start with, Detective? I think I need more coffee. Would you like some? No, I'm good. Need more coffee. You know what's the most beautiful, magical feeling? Waking up before sunrise, working on something creative, and getting completely immersed in it for hours. Pity I could never manage to wake up early. Then I, I did do it once. It was amazing. Imagine the scene. Petrichor and steam rising from a hot cup of tea. A cup made of mud, setting outside a wooden home as it rains outside. It's early morning, but the sun's yet to rise. A faint hint of light hides behind the horizon. Maybe it's the present day or a day from the mysterious past. All this, I must have experienced it before sometime. Must have not. Why are these images so strong, so attractive? Mm -hmm. Maybe because our ancestors lived that way? I'm gonna say. I have no idea, man, but I like the picture you painted there. There's something then, isn't there? I'd love to find out more about it. Or maybe it's the not knowing, the mystery that makes it special. To pursue the mystery or to leave it be. Hmm. Pursue it, my friend. Pursue it. Your head's on backwards. I'm sorry. Morning, Detective. What will it be? Just a cup of coffee, Mark. My lifeblood is coffee. I drink coffee all the time. I was married to a coffee. Barista. I hear Chris's friend is in town. That's interesting. I can't really discuss that, though. I understand. I'm really curious as to what happened, though. You know, during the early days, those two would sit on the same table as you and Officer Blunt there. Holding hands, whispering to each other. Honestly, despite what everyone else says, I did not see this coming at all. I really hope you cracked this case. Doing my best, Mark. Thanks for the coffee. See you, Detective. Yoink. I got coffee, let's go. Actually, talk. Wait, I missed. I missed my trigger. Uh, let's talk to Jack first. Let's see what Jack has to say about the picture first. All right, we can head to the repair shop. Shall we leave now? Yeah, let's not not waste any more time. All right, lead the way. Do I have to walk? Yep, we gotta walk shouldn't smoke so much. All right. We are currently on Main Street, I think. Yeah, I, I, I think. Sure. Um, We got to get over to the far left, it looks like, is where we go to Jack's place. To the house that Jack built. Oh, I got to click on it. Jack. Here's 
Here's Johnny. Fixing that car, bro. We gotta hit him with the big screwdriver. He did say he spends lots of his time working on his car. You're smoking again. Hey, dude, you come back for the car already? It's not done yet. No, I'm here for something else. Let's ask the second one first. Jack, what were you doing on 26th of August? That's quite specific. I don't know, working probably? How close were you to Diane, Jack? Were you friends? Not really. She and Chris just got their car fixed by me a couple times. That's all. Why did you meet her alone on the 26th of August? What? I didn't. Look at this photograph. That's your car outside their house, isn't it? That's, uh, yeah, that's that's mine. Well, can you explain that? It's, uh, gone there to fix the car, obviously. Look at that picture, Jack. Chris's car isn't in the driveway. I'm assuming he wasn't home, either. Oh. Right, this is probably another day. That must have been when I gone to get my payment for the work from them. Oh yeah, there's the date here on the photo. That's when I gone to meet them for the money. Sorry, Detective, I got the dates mixed up. Another thing, Jack. You said you gone for a drive around the time the shootings took place. Where were you before that? Tell me everything that you did on that day. Well, uh, okay, let's see. Woke up early as usual and opened up a shop for business. I think I was there until 11 a.m. Then I went to, yes, market. I went to the Pineview Market. What for? Did you meet anyone there? I not really. Oh yeah, I bought myself some food from Mark's Cafe. All right, continue. And well, after that, I worked again for a few minutes before taking a lunch break and a little nap. Around 5 p.m., I set out to meet Alan. He owed me some money from work I'd done for his car last week. He wasn't at the pub, though. A boy named Lindy there said he was sick and hadn't come in. Yes, and? So I went to his place instead. He wasn't there either. Neither was his car. Wait, wait, wait. You're saying Alan wasn't home on Sunday? That's what I said, Detective. He wasn't there. I went again at around 9 p.m. No luck. Hmm. I should go and meet him again now that he's back. I could really use that money. We'll be back if we need any more information, Jack. Uh, okay. Hmm. I mean, don't get me wrong. I can't remember what I do half the time. Day to day. But, like, he seemed real nervous for a second. What do you think, officer? I'm not convinced. He's hiding something. Exactly. Let's keep an eye on him. Meanwhile, Alan's got some clarification to do. He lied to us about Sunday. Let's find out why. Alright. Well, I know his, uh, his bar's right down here. He might still be open because, you know, drinking hours. Yes? Hmm. Let's, let's ease into it. Oh, no. We have new dialogue, okay. Where were you really, Alan, on the 6th of October? Wait, I, I thought I told you about that already. I was at home, sleeping mostly. Wasn't feeling well, so I didn't come to work. Are you completely sure you were home all day, Alan? You don't want to skip out on any details. Things could get difficult for you. Well, I, yeah, I did go out of town for a bit before that. i just gone over to Hank's in the other town a couple hours away to buy some supplies. You weren't too, you were too sick for work, but not too sick to drive? I feel better when I drive. Honestly, I find it very relaxing. Why didn't you tell us about this before? I really didn't think it was important. I was back the same night anyway. Let Officer Blunt handle it, honestly. We need to know your exact movements throughout the day. It's the only way we can count, on, count you out of suspicion. I I didn't lie, officer. I just didn't realize. What time would you say you got back to Pineview that night? I I don't know exactly. Maybe eight, nine. The 
place where you bought these supplies, would they be able to confirm this? I, uh, yeah, I don't see why not. We'll be back if we have any more questions. Come on, Blood. Alan is still lying, obviously. I need you to do something ASAP, Blunt. Find a phone and call up Hanks. He's probably going to call Hank up too and ask him to cover for him. Confirm Alan's alibi before he does that. Meet me at the station for Brad's interview after that. Got it. See ya. Detective! Oh, someone else. I thought it was Blunt again. Yes? I'm Lenny. I help Alan out of the pub sometimes. Ah, yeah, Lenny, I heard about you. You've been out of town the past couple days. Yeah, I just return, returned to Pine View today. I've been out since I last worked there on the 6th. I left that night. You know, the night that the incident happened. Did you by any chance see Jack that day? You know, the guy who runs the local auto repair shop? Did you see him around Mark's Cafe? Maybe around 11 a.m.? Jack, I, I did see him. I was sitting outside at the time, taking a break. He'd gone to the church, and they went over to the cafe. The church? Anything else you remember? Any details? I think he was carrying something, some tools, and a bucket of, uh, paint, I think. Hmm, alright. Thanks, Lenny. Is there anything else that you might, uh, wanted to talk about? Yeah, something that Chris told me once. Maybe it'll help with the investigation. I, I don't know. Chris was really, really drunk at the pub that night, and he shared something quite personal with me. He never came back to the pub after that day. Maybe he felt uneasy about sharing all this with a stranger? Flashback. Another one, Lenny. Are, are, are you sure, Chris? That's your... Just do it, Lenny. My mind's messed up. and I'm supposed to forget about it, she said. But it, it's impossible to forget about something like that. I, I just can't. How can anyone be so terrible? How can someone like that exist? I never thought... It makes me sick, Lenny. What's going on, Chris? Do you want to talk about it? I don't know if I should, but... Yeah, I gotta tell someone about it. I just can't keep it in me. Just can't try and forget about it. I've gotta do so... Something... Christ, Diane. Do you have any help? Do you have any... Do you have any... What? Do you have any idea how beautiful you look right now, at this exact moment? Chris. No, I mean it. I need you to know. It's important. I feel so grateful that moments like this exist, how special you are. Stop. Just stop saying things like that. I get it, you're shy, but... No, no, you don't get it. Forget it. How was your day? Diane. I'm not shy, I just... You're special, Chris. I'm just... me. Come on. Just let me, okay? I think you're really special. Pure even. I'm in awe sometimes. I thank you. You feel so much. I've never met anyone who sees the world the way you do. This is a lot, don't you think? No, I, I don't tell you often enough how perfect you are. How much good you've done me. Bloody hell, what are we doing, Chris? Joke. If you want, I can recap what we just did, if you think it'd help. I'm being serious. Uh, sorry. Diane? There's something I need to tell you. I've been meaning to for a while, but... You know I struggle with this sort of thing, letting people in. And you know there are things I still haven't told you. I know, and that's okay. Chris, I'm gonna be serious about us, you should know. Are we serious, I mean? Yes, of course we are. Alright, though I understand if you feel differently after I've told you everything. Diane, nothing you could possibly change, nothing you could say could possibly change how I feel about us. You don't understand. It, it'll change things between us. And it's up to you if you still want us to be a thing after that. I, I won't blame you for backing off. What the hell are you talking about? You're scaring me. Nothing's going to change. Alright. You know that I live with my mom and my stepdad, right? Well, she married him when I was about four. It's stupid. I don't even remember what my real dad looks like. Mom said he died in a car accident, and you know what? That's not important. I'm sorry. I, I, I don't know. Well, now you do. 
But Mum would go out to work, and my stepdad, well, he wasn't the working type. There were a couple times, I think when I was about eight or nine, he used to call me to his room. Ooh. Uh, Diane, you don't have to. I know, I know, but I need to, okay? Okay. It was only ever when Mom was away, I was too young, too stupid. He said we were just playing. Jesus Christ. I stopped for a while, but one Tuesday when I came home from middle school, when Mom was at work, he... You don't have to say it. You don't get it. I have to. I want to say it. This disgusting, dirty little word. My stepdad raped me, Chris. Diane. I was so confused, I couldn't process what happened. He kissed my mom on the cheek when she got home. Nothing had changed. Not in the world outside. Everything changed for me, though, more than I realized at the time. The next week, the next month, the same. Nothing. When I was 15, he tried again, calling me to his room as though I was still a little girl. Told him to go fuck himself. I locked myself in my room. When I came out, everything was as it had been. Dinner on the table. Normal. It's almost like it never happened, Chris, the way life has been around me. And I've known, and I've known that he was the kind of man no one would have believed me if I told him. No one would even think he could do such a thing. Makes you doubt yourself, you know? Your own memory? I was only a kid, Chris. Stupid kid. Diane, you need to tell your mother about this. And what good would it do, dredging all that shit up again? What would it change? It'd be good for you. Would it? I'm not so sure. So now you know. That was brave, Diane. I understand if it changes things, if this makes you reconsider. This changes nothing. Why the hell would you think it might? What happened was in the past. It's over. You did nothing wrong. You're not a different person because some awful thing that happened to you. It's a lot of baggage, Chris. It's not exactly in the past. Diane, I love you. And I'm not just saying that to make you feel better because we opened up or because we slept together. I love you, and I loved you more, loved you before tonight, and I'm pretty sure I'll still love you in the morning. You're an idiot. Yeah, well, what can you do? I love you too, Chris. Sweetie, you've been uncharacteristic, uncharacteristically quiet. What are you thinking? I hope oh, did not mean to skip over that. Sorry. Uh, I think it was. Uh, I feel the beauty of anything is so stupid to to think that or something. Don't. Your weird habits are what made me like you in the first place. Anyway, this isn't about you, Chris. Just don't get any stupid ideas. How can you expect me not to keep thinking about this? You said nothing would change. I can't sleep at night knowing that you and him were under the same roof. He hasn't touched me ever since, Chris. Nothing of the sort. Things have been normal for a long time now. Dumb curfews are the most I have to deal with anymore. Well, you shouldn't have to deal with that either. Chris, leave it alone. I told you because I felt you should know. That's all. Remain silent. Take vengeance in the night like Batman. Gotta meet Brad and Officer Blunt. They'll be at the station. So he knows this now, too. Ew. Maybe. Hmm. They think a third shot was fired, then maybe he confronted the stepdad, and the stepdad this, did all this. I mean, I'm not saying, like, oh, rapists or murderers, but... Do you, do you think you got a couple screws loose? I think you got some issues. A lot of, a lot of issues. Wouldn't put it past him. All right, uh, we are going to the... We gotta go Happy Valley, get to Sheriff's Department. They accidentally all tab, that's bad. There's Happy Valley. Which is a bit ironic of a name at this point, because no one's really happy. All. Oh god, and you said Chris told this all to Lenny? Yes. This makes, this makes Diane's stepdad a suspect, right? It does. We need to send someone over to find out what he was up to on the 6th. After the day's happened. What about Hank? 
Did Alan's alibi check out? Let me guess. It didn't. You're right. Alan was at a Hanks that day. He lied to us again. We need to find something to get him talking. Search warrant? There's no time. We'll have to get creative. Let's discuss that tomorrow morning. Uh, okay, so shall we head in? Brad's in there already. Yeah, let's go. All right, Brad, can you tell me... It seems Chris was trying to start a hotel here in Pineview. Do you know anything about that? Yeah, that was his big plan. He wanted to live in a quiet, peaceful place, but he also wanted to run a business. He was specifically partial to starting and running a hotel as he'd helped his uncle run his restaurant back home. How'd Chris manage the money for it? Some of it was from running the restaurant with his uncle. He inherited the rest of it. When his uncle died a few years back, Chris basically inherited everything he owned. His uncle had never married and had Chris taken Chris in with him. This was when Chris was 12, and he'd spent about five years between moving his parents and uh, different foster homes. So he came here to a little hidden away Pineview, got himself a new place, and started the process of getting the project approved. Not sure why the project never worked out. I'd, I'd lost touch with him by then. Poor guy. You mentioned yesterday that Chris and you had fallen out. Why did that happen? Yeah, well, Chris was really excited about Diane. He said he couldn't believe someone like her, as pretty as her, he said, could be interested in a shy person like him. I was worried for him. Everything was developing too fast. He just met someone that was studying a subject that she had no interest in, only so they could run away from home. And unexpectedly, she met an ambitious guy, Chris, who had all of his life plans sorted out. On top of that, a guy who'd got himself a new place far from the city. And now things were moving so fast that he was considering asking her to move in with him. He just felt something wasn't right, you know? Like, being his best friend, I let him know about it. He wasn't happy, of course. He was obsessed with Diane, and he would have defended her, taking her side over anyone else's, even mine. I told him just be careful about taking his, this further, and not believe everything she told him about herself. He was angry. He said I seemed to be suggesting that Diane was somehow manipulating him into asking her to move in. He didn't want to talk again after that. Hmm. That's always a possibility, too, because, really, I'm not saying... I mean, I, I don't know the truth. I mean, I guess this is a story at this point, but nothing would get you to want someone to move out fast and be like, yeah, I know, this guy in here that I live with, he, he raped me in the past. It's like, Ooh, yeah, let's get the GTF out of there. All right, let's, uh, 6th of October. Where were you on the 6th of this month, Brad? I guess it does look a little suspicious, suspicious doesn't it? Anyway, I was staying at the Blossom Hotel. That's where I'm getting married. The hotel guy should really confirm this. When did you last meet him? That's the, uh, when Chris had first moved into his new place in Pineview. So, what do you guys think? You got yourself a great place, Chris. I love it, it's so cozy. Can't wait to get this place set up. Well, I'm going to go in and make us some coffee before I leave. I am now bur... Yeah, Chris. My front door! Ah, oh, I can't take the excitement. We could go in if I'm done looking around outside like a derp. Hang on, I just got to look at all these things that are going to be uh, used in my murder. Ooh, my kitchen's empty right now. So much potential. I can't wait to build some furniture for it. Can't wait to see what you do with it. I really don't want to trespass my new neighbor's property already. Do you know who lives there? Uh, Mr. Willis, I remember correctly. You should go say hi. No way. I don't do that stuff. Talk to people. Are you crazy? The shut-ins. Building room. I'm going to watch so much TV in there. And the driveway that I can use. All right. Can I talk to you? Can not talk to you? Let's go in and get some coffee. Come on, let's go. I want to take another look around the house. What? Again? We just moved all those boxes in. I tell you, I'm planning to... I'm, I'm, I'll tell you what I'm planning to do with the place. Come on. Wait, come here for a sec.
Come on, let's go. It's a much nicer looking house when there's no blood on the floor. I'm pretty bad at making coffee, you know. Plus, I need to wash the dishes too. It's gonna take me a while. Aren't you gonna take a look around the house again? I should be done by then. Yeah. Move the story along. Thanks, buddy. I'm gonna build some counters here. I think blue will go well with the orange wall. Ooh, I agree. Come on, I'll show you upstairs. Oh, it's actually a pretty, pretty nice house. I don't think we got to see all the stuff. Some of it, not all of it. I wonder why they left this painting behind. Also, that place feels familiar. It's the church, yo. Is it somewhere in Pineview? The church, maybe? Hmm, could be. It's a painting. I like it. That's why I hide his keys there. My bed. Want to try it out? What? It's not even got any bed sheets yet, and the boxes are still unpacked. Ugh, that's so Chris. Stop rolling your eyes. Come on, there's more. Also, Brad's downstairs making coffee. I'm pretty sure, you know, he'd hear and be very confused. So this is where I'll have my desk, right in front of the window. Plenty of light and everything. Maybe build a bookcase right next to it. Sounds good. I like this spot, but I haven't decided what I'm going to do with it yet. Hmm, maybe some low seating? Or, ooh, how about a pinup board? Since you love making lists so much, you could put them over here. It's not a bad idea. All these plans for yourself. Do I fit in any of this? Of course you do. Do you really need to ask that? Mm-hmm. Okay. She has an issue with people. What are you planning to do with this room? I haven't quite decided yet. Maybe... A woodworking workshop, maybe. In a room on the first floor? You sure that's a good idea? Hmm. Not sure. I'll think about it. We haven't been in this room, I don't think. This 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 was blocked last time. Um, we, both times we've investigated the house. Are we done looking here? Yes. Chris? Yeah? What is it? What have you done to me? I didn't want any of these emotions, and now I don't want to leave. Well, that's what happens, you know? Once you go, Chris, you, uh, forget. And remember when I told you about the walls I've built around myself to not let anyone in? Yeah? I don't think you're breaking them down, but I think you are making a door for yourself, a safe, secure door. Does that make any sense? Yeah, it does, actually. Good. I want to change for you, Chris. I have trouble expressing how I feel. But I want to do that for you. And be a bit open about how I feel. Will you help me with that? Of course. I'm dreading that coffee. I, I know I have to go home after that's done. I'm going to miss you. Don't. Don't be so damn lonely in this new place. Well, you have to get used to it, don't you? Anyway, I can't stay. I'll be in trouble if I do. Why do you live at home or in a prison? You won't understand, so just leave it be. All right, the coffee's finally done. Grab a cup, both of you. <laughs> Try not to die. After that, Diane went away for a bit. I had the argument with him. He attacked me even though I only worried about him. That annoyed me. He was finally getting the love, attention, and adoration he'd always craves. She almost idolized him at times. I guess I was a little jealous, too. He, I... I'd suddenly been completely replaced by another person in his life. He'd almost forgotten that I existed anymore. I was really annoyed. Chris had become extremely stubborn and defensive over those days. So I thought, fine. See how this turns out for you. Enjoy the chaos that's coming your way. I gave up on him, and then this happened. and That's, that's what I regret so damn much. I would, I would force my company on him even when he didn't need it. And I abandoned him completely when... When he really needs someone to help him through whatever was going on. Brad, we don't know yet if that's really what happened, so... Yeah, I, I hope not. God, I, I hope it's not what it looks like. I 
All right, I'll meet you. Ba I'll meet you back here in an hour. Go get changed. Four. Ryan's birthday. Did you forget? Who? Oh. Go over to the clothing store on Central Street and buy something nice. What? Why? Treat yourself. It'll make you happy. But buying clothes doesn't make me happy. Just do it, Michael, please. I'd come with you, but I gotta change too. Now go. All right. See you in a bit. Good. See you, Michael. I'm gonna show up wearing something gross. Okay. Uh, I forgot where I'm supposed to be going. Oh no. In Central Street. There we go. Where's Central? To the right and down. That's Hasman. Central! Central Street. That's Overlook. Okay. I have made an error somewhere. I'm on Main Street, so that's Overlook right there. So, Aspen? Okay. Okay. That's how you do it. Aspen and then take a right, and that leads into the Central. Grandpa's now outside making breads and biscuits no more. It's a little late for him, I guess. Mm -hmm. Central Street, here we go. I told you to stop smoking. Right, convenience store, there we go, and a G. This is the place that Bloom was talking about. All right, let's see what they got. Hmm. T-shirt and jacket. That's nice. Black shirt. <sighs> I think T-shirt and jacket is more your style, sir. Because black shirt, you look a little bit like a cowboy. And being that I was raised up around cowboys, I try to stay away from that look. T-shirt and jacket. It's, um, it's, it's not, what, what am I saying? It's, uh, it's not really business casual, but it's casual, and it's nice looking, and it's probably chilly outside. This, this has been confirmed, but that would be more professional, and you are going someone's birthday. Oh my gosh! Uh, uh. You know what? Let's just take the t-shirt and jacket and get the heck out of here. <laughs> car's coming back. The car's coming back. Let's get out of here. Uh, where are we going? Alan's pup, so I gotta go back up the street. Alright, alright. Flying car. I think I figured out what killed, what killed those cookie kids. Bookstore, coffee shop, other side of the coffee shop. To the beer store. There's a, there, 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 there was a store. It's, it's not there anymore because uh, it closed down. There was a store where I grew up. That it was a gas station, but no one went there for the gas. No one really went there for anything except beer. Because it was real close to like a little subdivision, so... I, I can't remember the name of the place. I just know that as soon as I got my driver's license, my dad would be like, Hey, go to the beer store. Uh, okay, I've got no other choice. Let's do this. And but before you think I was buying stuff underage, no, like I, I, he, I drive him there, kind of thing. Uh, yeah, happy birthday then, office. Um, happy birthday, Ryan Watts, Ryan. Uh, thanks, boss. Well, this was entertaining. Thank you for inviting me, Miss Blunt. Glad you had. Uh, Fun, boss. It's getting late. I must get back home tomorrow. Have fun and uh, dance. I'll see you tomorrow in the station.
Damn, that was horrible. Thank God it's over. Happy birthday, Officer Ryan Watts. Snort. It's like a crime to call me anything other than Officer Watts. Well, anyway, let's move this cake out of the way and start with the real stuff. What do you want to drink? And then he said, that's not my job, sir. It's kind of badass. I used to be kind of badass. I feel so old these days. You don't need to, Ryan. You're good police. You're selling yourself short. Let me tell you who had the real badass on this table is. It's Officer Blunt, obviously. She won't mince words. She'll tell you what you need to hear, even if it's rude. All right, so once... And then, you, you know what happened next? Um. <laughs> mm. Man, Michael, you're drunk, I think. <laughs> Both of you are. I'm not drunk, I'm just nauseous. <laughs> oh, jeez. I, uh, I think I'm gonna go take a walk over to the bar. Be back in a bit. You, you can stand by yourself, Schmeichel? <laughs> Obviously. But can I run? Yes. Can I, can I dance? I hate dancing. Except when I'm drunk. I'm drunk. Dance, Michael, dance. Oh, yeah, running man. monkey yeah you kind of dance like I do I'll be honest the robot that's a police officer for you I'm sorry Wee. hey Lenny hey L L Lenny hey detective hope you're having a good evening Sure am, this great little place Alan's got running here. It is, isn't. The only place for a nightlife in Pineview, but it does a pretty good job. Is Alan not in tonight? No, he said he had some errands to run. He's traveling out of town tomorrow evening. Maybe it's got something to do with that. He's going out of town, did he? Excuse me, did he tell you why? Nope, he didn't. He said to be back in a day or two, though. Alright, thanks, Lenny. See you around, Detective. Stop smoking. I keep telling you to stop smoking. I know you had a... I don't know. They don't let you smoke indoors around here. But Yeah, I'll just run around. Get the blood pumping since, um, you know, we've been drinking. You, you're doing very well, Detective. Very well. One foot in front of the other. Damn, Michael. You got some moves. The robot was my favorite. Oh, yeah. Why, why was I dancing? Anyway... Blunt, Lenny just told me that Alan's driving out of town tomorrow. Not sure why. Uh, oh, so now you think Alan's done it, huh? We just don't know what he was... I'll have you know I've known Alan for almost five years. No, now, God got that? He'd never do such a thing. Uh, Ryan, can't we not, not do this right now? Just save it for tomorrow. Oh, my head. Because, you know, apart from the whole thing with pushing the murder story, you're a pretty okay guy. Ryan. I mean, someone this intelligent isn't a little funny, Amy. Almost like he's got some reason and agenda. Why can't you just settle for the simple, obvious truth, detective? You're going to give me a bad trip, Ryan. Why did you come here? Why did they send you here for such a simple case? Come here and muck it all up for us. Us small town cops are monkeys, aren't we? We're incapable. Can't get anything right. So you come in with all your gritty city experience and show us how it's done, right, Sherlock? Ryan. I'm gonna actually snap on him a little bit. I'm sorry. You're blinded by your bias towards the people you think you knew, Ryan. I'm blinded by my bias. Look at you. Whether you accept it or not, you're emotionally invested in this case. God knows why. You know we got the ballistics and fingerprints report, right? Wait, Blunt? 
We just did. I was going to tell you. Guess what the report says. That's right. Chris's fingerprints are all over the gun. Only Chris. How far are you going to go turn this case into something that's not? You're mistaken, Watts. I'm only following every... Oh, I'm mistaken. Sherlock here thinks he's perfect because he's never made any mistakes in his professional life. Isn't that right? You never made a wrong decision. Never done anything you shouldn't have. I don't want to punch him, but... Hmm... <sighs> He's... You know... But it's gonna cause me, I don't, I wanna get, like, all the stuff. Here, 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 where, where, I, I gotta, hang on, hang on, we're, we're gonna do this about as dust bunny as we can go. You can't see it, but I got a coin here. Heads, we threaten him, tell, we punch him. We're punching him. I've had enough of... Stop it, both of you. You're such idiots, both of you, like boys in a schoolyard. You can't sit for one minute like decent people. I'm going to the washroom, and I want you to be too talking about something else when I'm back. Nobody leaves until we get back, got it? Listen, detective, here's the thing. I'm only able to say all this because I'm drunk out of my mind, so that's a good thing. I've been in line for promotion for months. I don't know what's taking the sheriff so long, but he's been delaying it forever. And with the baby, I really, really, really need a promotion. Then this case came along, seeming all wrapped up from the beginning, and if I had the chance to lead the investigation... I'd be able to use that leverage to talk to the sheriff about the promotion. It would have done me a lot of good. But then you came along, and yeah, we've already discussed that. The thing is, and I think I can finally admit it, I think you're doing a damn good job, Michael. I think I was only bitter at having lost the opportunity. You're thorough, and you're going about it the right way, the way you should. There's a small chance my theory could be wrong, and I think you're doing the right thing by examining it further. I think... I've realized it's not my lack of ability that's holding me back. It's just me taking the easy way out and blaming others for what I've done instead of going and asking for what I do deserve. I'll confront the sheriff about the delay once this case is done with. But as of now, I've got a great chance to learn a thing or two from you, a chance to improve myself and to really verify the truth. So until then, you can count on me if you need any help. Damn, it feels good to finally let all that out. Not many people do that, Ryan, to think about why they might be acting the way they are. Just admitting it to yourself, that's brave. Thanks, Michael. And, um, sorry for punching you on your birthday. You know what? It was weak as heck. Who taught you to punch like that? Want me to take another shot? Well, this is surprising. What happened while I was away? Anyway, I'm glad you guys sorted things out, and I'm sorry for shouting at you, too. That's all right. We probably needed it. You did. It's getting late. Shall we get going? Thanks for this, Amy. Happy birthday, Ryan. So he's not that much of a dick, anyways. That's, that's good. Oh, boy. I think I may have had too much to drink. Bed. The more you drink, the more you pee. That is a good call, sir. Having been drunk a couple times, the worst case scenario is waking up in in, in a wet bed. Uh, how many you stop smoking? How many times have I told? How many times have I told you to stop smoking today? Jeez, you're worse than grandma. That's my party wear now. It's just party wear. Right. You know, I sleep stuff. You have... I just want to point this out. He has a bony butt. And you can tell if you look like right here. When he walks. That is some angular hip bone there. Like, he's all hip bone. It's got to hurt to set down, man. It's got to hurt. Alright.
right, good luck. Hopefully you're drunk enough that uh, it's gonna you're gonna rest well. <clears throat> oh boy, it's Diane. Oh, um, Michael, how are you? Make any progress with the case? Do the best I can, especially considering the mess I am these days. I just go out and work based on instinct and experience, but haven't been able to really think any of it through. I'm only hoping that if I keep at keep at it, the answer might jump out at me. But you don't have much time, do you? No, just two days more, maybe. I need to figure it all out before that. It's been four days already, Michael? Do you really think that's enough time? Hopefully that's all the time I'll need. If not, then... If not, then know that I'll be waiting. You won't be giving up, Michael. You'll just be doing the only thing that makes sense for you. If you're no longer capable, if you can't help people, then what's the purpose of your lonely existence in that world? But coming with me, that is meaningful. Am I wrong? I, uh, I want you to be wrong, Abigail. It can't all just end like this. You have two days. Figure it out if you truly believe that. You always have me if you fail. I'll catch the person that did it. Can you? Hey, we finally went outside. It's not too cold for it. Good sleep, dude. Good sleep. Deluge. Another non-smoking day. Turn it off, man. Turn it off. Heavy fog today. Let's get all geared up to go. Classic gumshoe. Now, I know it's a little bit shorter than the normal episode, but... We are kind of sticking with it being day to day to day for each, for each part. So, I guess this will do us for this evening. Thank you everyone for joining. Thanks for hanging out. For more news information on what's going on, what may be, check out the description below. If you like what you saw, want to see more, like it, slap the like button, bash the subscribe button, and share the video. The sharing the video part, like that helps big time. Expand the Slackers universe and all that mumbo jumbo. You know how it works. Yeah. So the plot thickens on how all this is coming down and. It, I mean, so it was Chris's hands on the gun, but to whom did he shoot? Because did they match the shell casings to that gun? I don't think they've actually pointed that out. They, they said ballistics reports, so maybe it is that gun and only that gun, but you, you don't know at this point. I mean, I don't know, maybe Chris was a little delusioned by what's going on with the, what Diane said. Maybe Diane was setting him up. Uh, to believe that the stepdad was someone bad. Uh, maybe she just was trying to push uh, them together, like uh, Brad was suggesting. You know, we don't have all the facts yet, so hopefully we'll learn to find out more next time. See you guys later. Bye.